Hello, this is Dr. Mears, and today we are going to learn about geometric sequences. Geometric sequences have a common ratio denoted by the letter R. This means you can multiply by a common number to get from one number to the other. The nth term or general term in a geometric sequence is the following. U sub n equals U sub 1 times R raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay, let's go through what each of these means. So hopefully you know by now that n represents the term number. U sub 1 is the first term. R is going to be our common ratio. And U sub n is going to be the term that we're talking about. In the term in the pattern or in the sequence. Okay, let's look to see how to use this. Number one, in examples, for each of these geometric sequences, write down one, the first term, u sub one, two, the common ratio, r, and find the tenth term, u sub ten. So let's look. Part a, we have two, six, 18, and 54 as part of our part of our geometric sequence. That means there's going to be a common number, our ratio, that we're going to be multiplying to get from 2 to 6, to get from 6 to 18, to get to, from 18 to 54. I'm going to give you the shortcut right now. The common ratio can be found by taking the second term, or u sub 2, and dividing it by u sub 1 or whatever two terms are next to each other. So you could do 54 and 18. It's always that second one. So part A, or part one, find the first term. U sub one equals two. So this was U sub one, this is U sub two, this is U sub three, and that's U sub four. So the first one, U sub one is two. Okay, the second thing that we have to do, find the common ratio, R equals, okay. We take the second term, 6, and divide it by the first term, 2. Dividing 6 by 2 gives us a common ratio of 3. It always works. So that means 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 3 is 54. And that's why it's called a geometric sequence because we have a common ratio. Next, part three, is find the tenth term. So now we have to use our general form, and we're going to have to put our numbers in. So u sub n, we're looking for the tenth. So I'm in place of n, I put 10, because that's the one we're looking for. u sub 1, u sub 1 we found was 2. I'm putting parentheses here, because I have to put my r in. r is 3 close parentheses, and I'm going to raise that to a power of n, which is 10 minus 1. I always like to just do the minus 1 before I put in the, in the calculator. You don't have to, but I do like to rewrite it like that, just in case a lot of things can go wrong when, once you're in the exponent spot. So I just like to rewrite it. 10 minus 1 is 9. Now you can do this in the calculator. On. What we're going to do is clear that out. We're going to press 2, parentheses, 3, close parentheses. This button above the multiplication symbol, this is your exponent button. Look, it puts you in the exponent spot. And we're going to put in, I'm going to make it 10 minus 1. Okay, so see how we're in the exponent spot? So you have to make sure if you do put 10 minus 1, you still are in that exponent spot. And that comes out to 39,366. Now, if you didn't, if you just did... Um, you subtracted 10 minus 1, you can just raise it to the ninth. So that's one. That's what I did here. And again, you get the same answer. So you can do it either way if you want to just keep it as 10 minus 1 or if you want to subtract it. Either way works for this. Okay. So u sub 10 equals 39366. Yeah. And that's how you find each part. Let's go on to the second one. Number 2, part B. Okay. For the first part, we have to find the first term. So u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3, u sub 4. So u sub 1 equals negative 3. Be careful, that is a negative there. Okay, part 2. 
find the common ratio. So we always take the second one, 6, divided by the first one, negative 3. Our common ratio is negative 2. And this makes sense because look what happens. We flip back and forth. What do I mean by that? We go negative 3, positive 6. Negative 12, positive 24. The next one's going to be negative. Then it's going to be positive. So it switches back and forth from positive to negative. And if you notice that, that means the ratio is going to come out to be a negative number. All right, part three, we have to use our term up here, u sub, what do they want us to find? 10 again, so put 10 in for n. Our u sub 1 is negative 3. Parentheses, we put the negative 2. Now this is where the parentheses are very important because you have that negative number. So be careful. I like to just get used to using parentheses all the time for this because when you have that negative number, it's going to matter that it's going to be raised to the 10 minus 1. Now, if you want to put that in your calculator as is, you can, or if you like to subtract it so it's a little bit neater, you can as well. Either way works. So let's put that one in our calculator, negative 3. And remember, please, that negative button is down here next to the enter. So just be careful. Don't go pressing minuses or you're not going to get the right answer times negative 2. Please note it's inside those parentheses raised to, let's do the 10 minus 1. For those of you that like to do that, that's fine. And we're going to get 1, 5, 3, 6. So the 10th term, if we kept going here, would be 1, 5, 3, 6. And here it would be 39,000. 39,366. Okay, let's keep going. All right, part C. For the first one, we need u sub 1 equal. So this is u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3, u sub 4. So the first term is 16. Okay. Part 2, we have to find the common ratio. So we take the second one, 8, and we divide it by the first one, 16. Look what happens. This is a going to come out to be a fraction. You need to reduce this fraction. So this is going to be 1 half. What I did to reduce it is that I saw that 8 can be divided by 8, 1, and 16 can be divided by 8, 2. If you don't know, you can always... Go in your calculator and divide this out, 8 divided by 16. It gives you 0.5. And then remember to turn anything into a decimal. Remember we can press the magic buttons, math, enter, enter. And this will change it, math, enter, enter, into that reduced fraction of 1 half. Okay? Do not write. Please, do not write 2. It's not, because we have to multiply each of these by one-half. One-half times 16 is 8. 8 times one-half is 4. 4 times one-half is 2. So please be careful of that. All right, part 3. Oops, I didn't write a little 3 there. Part 3, we have to find the tenth one. So u sub 10 equals first term 16 times our common ratio, one half. Again, this is where your parentheses are going to come in handy because what we're going to be is dividing one divided by two. So you have to keep this in parentheses because we need to raise it to the 10 minus one. So u sub 10 equals, I like to put that to the nine. Okay. So let's see. So clear that out. 16 times one now, how do you get that fraction bar? It's just the division symbol. Be careful, you need it in the parentheses. Closing your parentheses, raising it. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna do 10 minus one. You could do the ninth if you want. 0 0.01325, zero, sorry, 0 0.03125. But I don't want it in the decimal, I want it in the fraction. So again, I'm gonna press, press math. Math. I see that it says two fraction. Enter, enter, and I come out with 1 over 32. And so the tenth term, if I kept multiplying by 1 half, the tenth one would be 1 over 32. Okay, let's do two word problems that you're going to see right here. And I'm actually, I wanted to write down my general term, but we can do that after. Um, all right, so we have Violet is starting her new job. She earns 48000 in her first year, and her salary increases by 5% each year. 
we have to do a couple things. First, show that show that Violet's annual salary follows a geometric sequence and state the common ratio. Calculate how much she will earn in her fifth year at work. All right. So the first thing we have to know is when we increase, what common number are we going to be multiplying by? I will demonstrate it to you that it's a geometric sequence in a minute, but let me show you how to find the common ratio. So what words we need are the words right next to our rate, and this is increase. We're going to be having, we're going to start with U sub 1, which is $48,000. And we're going to have to increase that by 5%. So we're going to have to multiply it by something to get to our second term by some number. I'm going to tell you that when you're, I'm trying to think of where to write this nice and neat. We can write it here. When you are increasing by a percent, what you're going to multiply by is 1 plus the rate in that decimal. You need the rate as a decimal. Remember, to get to the rate as a decimal, you divide it by 100, and that gets you there. Decimal, okay? So for us, we have 5%. So 5% divided by 100 is 0 0.05. So that's our rate as a decimal. And so this is going to equal 1 plus 0 0.05. And so that equals 1.05. And so that is going to be our R. That's what we're going to have to multiply to get from one to the other. So let's find U sub 2. So how to find U sub 2 is we just take the 48 and we're going to multiply it times 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05. So u sub 2 equals, so remember, this is the long way, just like arithmetic sequences, which I do have videos on, this is the long way to do it. I'm not using any formula. Um, this is just dialing back the old school. Okay, so I just multiplied 48,000 times 1.05, and I get 5040, 5040. And so that is our second term, 5040. Four zero zero. Okay, to get u sub 3, I'm going to have to take what I just did, this 50400, zero, 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 multiply that one. So u sub 3, again, this is the old way of doing it. This is the long way of doing it. We don't, I'm not using any formula, I'm just multiplying it by its rate. And so, whoops, sorry everybody, I'm making you erase there. I was talking 50400. Zero, zero, zero. So this has to be the one that we just found. You're using the one that we just found. Okay, just brought it down, everybody. Multiply that. I can just push, if you just push the multiplication, you see how it says answer there? That's a little blurry because it's, it's a calculator. If you just press answer, it brings that down for you, which is kind of handy um, if you want to use it. I get 52920. Five, two, Two nine two zero. Okay, I could keep going on to use of four, but I'm not going to. So here's the thing: I have a common rate. Okay, the ratio. I found that common ratio. There it is. Check that out. Okay. To show that it's a geometric sequence, well, let's divide. Let's just take the numbers and prove that this is R. So what we do is we're just going to take. So let's prove this R. R equals, we're going to take U sub 2, 5, 0, 4, 0, 0, and divide it by 4, 8, 0, 0. Let's see what we come out with. Clear. 5, 0, 4, 0, 0, divide by 4, 8, 1, 2, 3. Enter. There you go. 1.05. R equals 1.05. Let's do it one more time. But now let's do it. Let me prove to you that if you take these two numbers. So you have to take the third one. 52920 divided by 50400. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, I should get 1.05. Let's see. 52920 divided by. There it is. I got it again. It checks, checks out. So this is proving, showing that this is also going to equal our rate. That is how you show. You demonstrate, you divide out, and you show me that you are coming out with that same number, the same number that you have to multiply to get from one term to the next. Okay, so we got that. Check. What do you have to find last? Calculate how much she will earn in her fifth year. So now we have to go to our general form. 
okay? U sub, now N is five, fifth year. Remember, fifth, first, second, third, fifth. Fifth year, so n is five equals u sub one is four eight zero 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 times our common ratio one point oh five raised to the five minus one. You can put all that in the calculator. I'm not even going to subtract it. I'm just going to put it all in the calculator. Um, so four eight. Oh, let's clear that out. Four eight one two three times one point oh five. Notice my parentheses raised to the five minus one. And no, making sure that's all in the exponent spot. Enter, okay, so in the fifth year, five, eight, three, four, four, point three, but this is in dollars, so I need some change, so that's really 30, so that's really 30 cents. So year five, she will earn $58,344.30. Okay, now we did increase for this example. So our last example, we are going to be decreasing. So let's see what Mr. Farmer decides to do. Mr. Farmer buys machinery for US dollars, 25,000. Wow, it's a lot of machinery. The machinery depreciates at a rate of 8% per annuum, meaning per year. Find the value of the machinery after five years. So now we're depreciating, which means we're decreasing or depreciates. So by a percent. So what we have to do for this, if we decrease, we're going to have to do one minus the rate in a decimal. That's how you're going to find your R. Okay, so R here is going to be 1 minus, we have 8, 8 divided by 100 is 0 .08, 0 .08, so our R that we're going to be using is going to be 1 minus 0 0.8, which is 0 0.92, 0 0.92, 0 0.92, okay. Now, farmer buys it for 25. So that's our starting. We started at $25,000. Sorry, started. I'm setting everything up because we're going to have to use our general form to find what's our N, everybody? That's right, five, five years. All right, so this is a little bit simpler than this. We just did a lot of work. I wanted to do a lot of concepts with you here, and this is more of a straightforward, let's find our first term, our rate, and then they gave us your N. All right, so U sub 5 equals 25,000 times 0.92. So don't use this. If it says decrease or that's what you, you have to do this step, everybody. Okay. And then raise to the 5 minus 1. Okay. Let's go over here. Let's substitute everything in. 2, 5, 1. Raised to the 5 minus 1. You could put 4. Like I like to reduce it, but that's fine. Um, so 17909.82. So after 5 years, after 5 years, the machinery depreciated to 17909 and 82 cents. So it went from $25,000, what he paid, that's our original, down to $17,908.82. And this is what happens. This is what happens with machines. This is what happens with cars. This is what happens with computers. After you buy it, after you walk out of the store or walk out of the lot, the value goes down. So now you know how to calculate what that value is after so many years. This has been Dr. Mears, and I hope this helped with geometric sequences.